What is up guys, this is PVM Vertical and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. And if you just clicked on this video, which I'm sure you have, do not leave yet because if you do not know how to do or play Kerbal Space Program, today you're going to learn how to orbit and how to do basic flight control whilst in space. So right now I'm just kind of sitting here in the uh, tracking station because I like a cinematic view of all the places you can go. I mean, you got your jewel system with all the nice little planets. Look at that. And you have to understand that you can't get anywhere in space without using basic flight controls. You can do advanced flight controls also, but you really, really need to know the basic ones. Because, of course, basic ones compound into the more complex ones. So, what you're going to do is go to the VAB. And we're just going to make, a, not like a basic rocket like we did last time, but we're going to make a, um, a normal sized rocket. We'll give it a nice decoupler. Staging will already start to happen. We'll give it a parachute. Remember, your parachute's in the utility. And pods in there. Fairly simple. Structural, of course, has decouplers in it. You know, basic stuff. Basic stuff, you should have watched the first tutorial. If you haven't, go watch the first tutorial. Otherwise, you're not going to know what the heck I'm doing at all. So before we actually get into the flight, I'm gonna attach I'm gonna attach this kind of fuel tank, and we're gonna talk about engines for a little bit. Okay. So you may be saying, if I want to get into space, I need a big engine. That's true. You need a big engine in the first stage, but if you're designing this higher up stage, it's gonna be flying through space. In space, you don't you don't you have a lot of time. Okay, you have a lot of time to burn. So you don't need a whole lot of power at once. Like on the ground, you need a thrust to weight ratio of something greater than one. This is a mod, but you can see it has a 4.3 thrust to weight ratio. Now, if you had one of these, oh, hold on. If you had one of these and one of these, you can see that it's a 0 0.85. So if I were to fly it, if I were to fly it, it's never gonna lift off the ground ever. Because that's that's not possible within the realms of physics. You can't you can't have something with less power going down counteract or less power going down to make the spacecraft go up. The spacecraft cannot go up slower than gravity is pulling it down. So let's say that the Earth this isn't actually correct for Kerbin. The Earth pulls down at 9.8 meters per second. If you don't have 9.8 meters per second of um, acceleration going upwards, you're never going to move anywhere. So if I were to launch this, you'll see that it does not go. But let's let's take for a moment and let's let's go to Alt F11 or Alt F12. Can't remember which which one it is. All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna have to skip over that part because that part would not work because apparently I did not enable cheats. But you know that's okay. You you can get the picture. If there's no gravity, well, there is obviously going to be gravity. But if you're not being if you're not near the surface and you're just kind of floating around in space, you have a lot of time to apply pressure. So really, if I wanted to launch this, I could. Even though it has a thrust weight ratio of less, I could launch it. But let's just keep it efficient. Let's let's um strap this engine right into the back of it. Okay. So what we need is stages to lift it up into orbit or lift it up high enough so that this can power it. Now let's talk about why we would use this instead of this. If you um use your middle mouse button, or right right uh right mouse button. I'm sorry. The mouse button is find out the stuff when you're uh, in this place. You can right click it here. You can see the engine ISP is 300 ASL, which is um, at sea level. 390 in a vacuum. Now, more is better for this. If you have a if you have a higher ISP, that means it is higher efficiency. Look, so this says it's, it, it takes 1.5275 liquid fuel per second. This here takes 5.72 units of liquid fuel per second. So this consumes a lot less than this, but it has, oh, what's the thrust on this thing? 50, this one has 200. So really this thing, it's, it's only marginal, but this thing is more efficient because also it has less mass. This mass 1.5, 0.5. So on upper stages, it's best to use these smaller engines like this. Okay, 
So always use these in your upper stage, unless you all you could also use like a nuclear engine. This has an ISP of a uh, of 800. That thing's really really efficient. And this is also the max, by the way. That's max. That's probably referring to the lower ISP at sea level. So this is probably not what you're really going to get in space. So that's just another another thought. So you're just going to add another stack to coupler once you've completed your orbital stage. Which we will not be adding anything more complex to because just for the sake of this tutorial we don't need to. And then we'll, let's add uh, let's add some fuel tanks. This is a double fuel tank. It's basically, you know, these stacked on top of each other with a nice little finish. I like them. It reminds me of the Mercury uh, missions. Add, let's add two of them. And then we'll add... Uh, let's see, which engine should we have? This one it says... It's a lot. It has a lot of power. It has 370 ISP. Pretty, pretty, you know, standard. This one has the same stuff. 320, uh, 370, 320, 370, same stuff. It's just the only difference is this one consumes a little bit less liquid fuel per second. It has a little bit less um of a max thrust. But if you look at the gimbal section down here, it says it has a vectoring range of one degree. What does this one say? This has no gimbal. So if you fire this, you're not going to be able to control your rocket. If you fire this, the engine will like kind of aim different directions or like aim to the left if you're going that way. So what it will do is it will divert your thrust to get your rocket to aim one direction. So that that just gives offers you more control. So I would not say to use this unless you're just starting out. That's just another another thought. So this thing uh this thing looks like it'll make it in an orbit, to be honest. I mean, there's no reason for it not to. I mean, it has a large stage, it has a nice upper stage. It should work. But I'll just, just for precautions, I'll put some batteries on there just in case it runs out of batteries. I'm going to save it and launch it. I didn't add any wings. That's just because I want to show you the power of the gimbal. I'm going to zoom in and I'll show you. So this, of course, has a thrust-to-weight ratio of 1.43. I used a mod to check this. I recommend it. Kerbal Engineer. It says it down here. Thrust-to-weight ratio, 1.42. If you throttle up, or if I were to throttle up um, when I was actually firing, it should go up. Hold on. I'm going to assume stability assist controls. RCS does not do anything right now, but I'll enable it anyway. 1.43 thrust weight ratio. If I throttle down, it goes down. I could leverage it right at 1.0. But I'm just going to launch. I'm not going to use this mod because that's not in stock. But if you wanted to use it, I recommend it. Do not, please do not use MechJub. It's nice for, you know, landing on the moon when you don't know how to fly. But it's not good for when you actually want to play the game. It doesn't become fun anymore when you autonomously use MechJub. Unless, of course, you're an engineer type of person and you don't want to fly. Because Kerbal Space Program is for everyone. If you just want to design stuff and have it fly it, that's just fine. But if you want, if you came here to fly, this is a tutorial. So my advice is to not use MechJub. If you want to use it, that's fine. But in my personal opinion, you should just fly everything yourself. So this thing is getting up here. I'll try to turn a little bit, and I'll I'll show you. Okay, so you can see that it aims slightly to the side, and that's why it turns. See if I zoom in, look at it, it's twitching a little bit in order to get you where you want to go. And that helps you fly it easier, of course. You'll see that if we um, go up and we cut the engine a little bit when we're up there, it will not turn nearly as easily because you won't be able to divert the actual thrust. You'll only be able to use um, the crew capsule's power to turn it. And yes, we probably should have given this or given this thing a better thrust to weight ratio. But for the sake of efficiency, we used one of these and we used two stacks or two things of fuel. Probably not the best idea, but you know, it's what you gotta do. So we're just getting up here. Pretty slow launch. Pretty uneventful. We're gonna aim, of course, at forty five degrees. At 14,000 meters, you should really start at 10,000 meters, but kind of gradually turn it over. Because I'm, I'm guaranteeing that your rockets won't be perfectly designed when you design them or when you build them. So I just say, 
I'd say for a beginner, if your rocket does not have, if your rocket isn't accelerating that fast, I'd say go for um a 15,000 meter turn. If your rocket is like zooming off the pad, I go for 10,000. It all depends on your rocket's design, honestly. So here's the staging point. You can see that we that that stage is going out of control without the rocket to stabil to uh, stabilize it. But we're just going to switch right over to our main upper stage engine. And we are zooming through the upper layers of the atmosphere. We got Bill Kerman in here. We can get the IVA. Wow, look at that. It's very black. Can I rotate it? Oh, no. There we go. His last sight of Kerbin. That's not, not his last, I guess, but the last for right now. I'm going to aim the camera elsewhere, and I'm going to assume the outside controls. So what we're doing here is we're slowly, slowly turning over to the side. This right here is prograde. This is the direction of your, mon of your momentum. If you aim at it, you accelerate really, 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 really fast. If you aim to the side of it, it's, it's a little bit less, you can see, if you notice that. We're actually going to aim a little bit up so we can fine-tune this to come up if you see. You're adding momentum upwards more, because I'm aiming upwards a little bit more. If I were to aim at it, I'd be putting it all horizontal. Now we can go horizontal since we're going up into the up into a nice level altitude. Now if we switch over to our map, we're going to use something called a maneuver node soon. But not, not right now, I don't think. I guess we could just show it for proof of purchase or proof of proof of concept, I mean. What am I doing? Proof of purchase. <laughs> this is not a this is Kerbal Space Program. This is not grocery space program. Um <laughs> that was a pretty bad joke. We are launching right up, and we are going 2,200 is the meters per second you really want. 2,300 maybe, depending on your type of launch. But we're just going to go up until 100,000 meters, because that's that's a nice height. However, 1,200 is what I usually go to, but I'm just going to let decay, because we are still in the atmosphere. That's right there. We're going to be losing velocity still. But we're going to fly up there, and when I get the up there, I'm going to teach you a little bit of, about more um, maneuvering. As of right now, you know how to turn basically left and right. And there's a lot more to do to that than um, just that. We are on a good course. So let's, uh, I, th I think we're at the right height. No, we're a little bit less. Need about 70,000 meters. The music starts, that's how you know you're in space. Now we're going to set down a maneuver node. Now these are crucial. If you want to get anywhere when you're a beginner, you need to use these. I can do it kind of without maneuver nodes, but beginners, you always should. So just place this right down right here. I'll do that again. You left click here, add maneuver. Do not want to focus on Kerbin. That was pretty bad. That's a bad thing to do. There you go. And what you're going to do to circularize is you want to burn at the apoapsis, and so to get a programmable maneuver node to do that, remember this prograde thing? You saw that earlier down there? Or, I don't know, over here? Yeah, you're going to want to drag the prograde. This means that you're adding to your velocity. So it makes your orbit bigger. So you can just kind of shape it. Retrograde over here is aiming the other direction, which makes you go slower and makes you fall downwards. Inclination makes you burn up. This inclination makes you burn down. This makes you burn towards Kerbin, which is extremely inefficient. This one makes you burn away from Kerbin, which will give you greater height. But we're just going to use a nice prograin bird, or a nice prograin, prograde burn. And we're going to make it circular. So when you drag this, you'll see an estimation of what your path will be like. My apoapsis here is way too much on purpose. It's 189, so I'm going to drag retrograde to say, oh, I don't want to make it burn that much. This is periapsis of 83,000. We want our things to be equal. 119, we want it to be 119 over there. If we do it slowly, you'll see that it eventually switches. Oh, slower. Oh, slower. It's even slower than that. Slower. This is as good as we're going to get. 119, 119. That should be an even orbit. Now, it says that we're just going to take the burn. It'll take five seconds to do this. 
Now, we don't want to burn at the thing, because if we burn, our duration will be from here to about here. We want our duration to be here until here, because that way our average will be right down the middle. We don't want to start here and then burn here, because the average will be right here, and our peri or our apoapsis or periapsis will be more over here, and it'll be messed up. So you want to burn halfway. So estimated burn says five seconds. We want to burn 2.5 seconds before the node. So if we go a little bit of time warp, I'll get my nose set. I'll get into this mode. We want to start burning at full throttle at 2.5 seconds. So we're going to start at three because it takes a little bit of time to throttle up. Give it some compensation. It takes a little bit of skill. Okay, so we uh we overshot a little bit. So if you want to, you can always correct this. So we'll just go over here to your maneuver node, which is the blue one, the blue icon. Just burn a little bit to correct it. 0.0% uh, meters per second. There you go. Should be 119, 119. 119.052, 119, 132. Our desired one that we planned was 119.0 something. So we're pretty close. So honestly, this circuit, this is a very, very circular orbit. This is even more circular than some satellites orbiting Earth. So we're just going to witness the solar sunrise. And I'll just show you how to interact with some items on your spacecraft before I teach you how to do a little bit of orbital maneuvering yourself without maneuver nodes, just so that you can have a quick reference. So I'm going to have the photovoltaic panels come out. You right-click it, and you say extend or attract. Very cinematic. Right-click extend. You uh, left-click for that. And your panels will automatically fill up your electric charge right on there. So if you see, we use... We don't use much, honestly. It's because we have Bill Kerman doing it. If we had an SAS module, it would take up electricity. If we had other things, it would take up electricity. But right now, we do not have, we do not really need electricity. It's just a uh, proof of concept. So I'm going to put those away, honestly, because we don't really need those. So, I'm going to fly around a little bit. So you might think, oh, I want to return to Kerbin. Let's just point at the ground. At the... Well, if you do this, you would assume that your orbit would go, like, it would compact, like the periapsis go down. That's true. If I burn this way, and I my fuel, it's going to eventually go down, but it's very, very, very inefficient. It is better, if you want to go back, to use retrograde. You actually burn, let me, let me give you an example. You're burning away, so you're burning that way. And it'll drop it so much faster. Look at how fast that's going. That's how you burn back to Kerbin. Before we land, let's try to land, let's, let's try to land over here on this island. So if you want to land there, let's go back to here for reference, because you might need to do that. You want to aim up, right? Because your, your target's over there. This is an inclination. The purple ones are inclination. And we don't really want to use a maneuver node right now because we just kind of want to do this all manually. So we're just going to burn this way. This way is going to push us up more a little bit. Keep an eye on our fuel. You can click that to pin it. And we're going to get that in our sights. Should be good enough. And you say, well, I'm going to overshoot that by a lot. Well, the atmosphere actually slows you down. But we are still kind of high up, so we might need to do retrograde a little bit. A little bit more. And, to be honest, we should be good to go. We're going to land, we're going to try to land as close as we can to there. We should burn a little bit more. Okay, we practically burned out. Let's just, um, Honestly, let's just attach. Goodbye. Deploy our parachute. We should be right on course. Looks like we're very much on course to that little island over there. That's how you do inclination. Inclination is kind of a hard one to master 
you should use maneuver nodes. I was just doing it as a proof of concept that you can do it with the new nav ball controls that were introduced in the new 0.90 update. And you can use per, uh, blue and purple controls, but honestly, which for what you're going to be doing, you're probably only have to, going to have to use retrograde, which is the three pronged one, and prograde, which is this one. So, to be quite honest, you might not even have to interact with, with what I just told you. You can probably get into orbit without having to do that. I'm just trying to prepare you guys for the future. So, let's just do a nice landing here. We'll end the tutorial. We actually might not. We might not land on it, but we might. We're gonna land very, very close to it, if anything. I'm gonna do a nice time warp. Oh, we're getting kind of close to it. Oh gosh. We are skewing off a little bit. I wanna. Oh gosh. I wanna try to divert to this way. We're gonna try to angle ourselves that way a little bit. Push ourselves that way. We might land on the coast. Oh, this is gonna be a close one. This is gonna be a close one, my friends. But I don't think we can do it. Nope, we can't do it. But. We're going to land close. I'll just do a nice time warp, see how close we can get. Yeah, we, we undershot a little bit. Oh well. Thank you guys for watching this Kerbal Space Program tutorial. I hope you learned something about getting into orbit and everything you need to know for just kind of maneuvering yourself in space and maybe designing an orbit-bound rocket. It's, it doesn't take a big rocket, it takes a very simple one. I hope you guys do good in your next Kerbal Space Program adventures. If you like this video, leave a like. Maybe get a su nice subscribe for me. So you can see more Kerbal Space Program tutorials. Other people have them out there, but none are the same as mine because I am the one talking in my videos. And of course, Bill Kerman lives to see another day. He lands close to the Kerbin Crater. And he's going to wave goodbye. Can you wave? Nope. But he says goodbye anyway. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Again, stay tuned for more Kerbal Space Program tutorials. This is PVM Vertigo. Peace out.